Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at how we can compute torsion um, of the helix that we had. R T is equal to cosine T, sine T, and 2T here. Okay, and we're going to use the idea that torsion is equal to um, the R triple prime dotted with so the jerk vector dotted with the cross product of R prime and R double prime, which we could actually rewrite as, um, so R prime is actually V. And then we have A, um, and, then, and then we have A, which is R double prime. So basically we have this. Um, so dotted with that, and then we're dividing with, dividing by, um, just the length actually of V cross A um, squared. If you remember in that formula that we had, it was R prime cross R double prime. And then we were finding that length and squaring it, but we could just may as well just write this V cross A and square it. So this is really what we're doing. If you want notationally, you could replace this R triple prime right here. Instead of doing that, you could just use the letter J if you like, um, J representing triple um the tri uh, uh the triple prime or the third derivative or sometimes known as the jerk all right so jerk dot quantity v cross a all divided by this right here will give us the um the torsion so let's work through that all righty so let's take our different derivatives here of r so first we have so let's just write cosine t sine t 2t and just take derivatives. Next derivative is negative sine t cosine t 2. Then we have negative cosine t, negative sine t, and 0. Um, next, we have the derivative of negative cosine t is simply uh, sine t. And then we get negative cosine t and zero. So we have R, R prime, R double prime, and R triple prime. Okay, now uh, let's compute V cross A since that occurs. That's right here, V and A. So that's V, A, that's J. Okay, so let's just go through this. V cross A, it's all set up here. Same thing as before, that's C. And so for this component, we have that minus that. So it'd be two sine t, two sine t. And then for the middle guy, um, we have that minus that, but then we change the sign so that we have um, minus, so we get zero minus two times negative cosine t. So that would be um, it's just two, uh, just two cosine t, but then we change the sign. So it's negative two cosine t. And then for the last component, we have sine squared, and then we have uh, minus negative cosine squared. So it's just plus so cosine squared. So we just get one sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So this is what V cross A looks like. Okay, so if we can dot, take this and dot it with that, we'll get the top of this. All right, so let's try that. So sine T, times that, that would be two sine squared. Remember the dot product's just gonna give us a number. Negative cosine T times negative two cosine T is gonna give us plus two cosine squared T. And then we have zero times one, which is zero. So the top act in the dot product just looks like we're gonna get a two because it's two times quantity sine squared plus cosine squared, which is just two times one. So we're gonna get two on the top. Um, okay, and then on the bottom, we just need to find the length of this, which we can do. Um, we'll end up getting uh, four sine, so squaring each thing, plus four cosine squared t plus one. Notice factoring out the four out of these, sine squared plus cosine squared, which is one, so we get four plus one, so square root of five. So it looks like we end up getting two over the square root of 
Um, oh, but then we have to square it, right? Aha, remember, squaring it, yeah. Square root of five squared, always square that length after you compute it. So we end up just getting a torsion value of two fifths. And notice that this is a constant torsion for, for this helix. It doesn't change dependent upon T, but it's same for every value of T. We end up getting two fifths as the torsion. Now remember that torsion is the projection of uh, dB uh, dS in the direction of the negative n. So if the curve is coming like this, and n is going that way, um, and b is, a, so n is this way and t is this way. Actually, in this particular case, b is gonna be pointing down um, here, down this way. And so um, dBDS is kind of like the derivative. How is this changing as I'm moving one arc length over? And it's gonna be represented by dBDS is actually in the direction of n, it's parallel to n. So it's either gonna be going, going that, so this tilt is either gonna be going that way or that way, going back and forth. And we notice, and since we're projecting onto, uh, we're projecting onto negative n um, and we're going in, so we're projecting on, and we have a positive projection. So that means we're gonna go, it, um, onto negative n. That means that actually dBDS is actually gonna be pointed this way. So it means as we go at this particular, actually the whole time, we're actually gonna be tilting in that direction, the same amount, and we're tilting by, um, and, the, and the derivative of how it's tilting um, is two fifths, um, meaning for every unit length we go, we go about two, uh, for every unit length, that means that, um, that we're gonna tilt by that much by a vector, the change from here to here, from the B from this point to this point is gonna be, um, is gonna be two fifths. Thanks for watching.